Hi, I'm Kate, and on this episode of Bite Size, we're gonna be checking out boba. My students were obsessed with boba, and to be honest, I never really understood why. So we're gonna go to a boba shop, check it out for the first time, then attempt to make it, and learn the science behind it too. First stop, the boba shop. We got two different drinks, one with black sugar tapioca boba, and then a mango flavored drink with mango jelly, lychee, and mango popping boba. It's like very sticky, very chewy. Hands down, the mango popping boba was the winner. The black sugar tapioca was just a little too chewy, and the jelly ones didn't have enough flavor. Definitely better. First, a really concentrated, cold mango juice. After going to the boba shop, we decided that we're gonna focus on popping boba, which is the boba that has a little bit of juice in the middle. So we decided to bring home some boba so we could really closely analyze it and show you the difference. So we have a tapioca one, a jelly one, and then the popping boba here. And we can see when we push on these two, nothing happens. And when we push on the popping boba, we get that juice on the inside. And then we have this gel-like layer that's now squished on the outside. So this is our goal. The two main chemicals we're going to need to make popping boba are sodium alginate and calcium chloride. Calcium chloride easily dissolves in water and that's because it's an ionic compound. When we add water, it dissolves into its respective ions. Sodium alginate, on the other hand, requires an immersion blender to fully dissolve. Sodium alginate actually comes from seaweed and is a polymer. Like other polymers, it's usually used as a gelling agent just like gelatin, but it works more quickly. Let's look at these compounds more closely to understand what's going on. Calcium chloride is made up of two ions, a calcium ion that has a plus two charge and two chlorine ions that each have a negative one charge. That way it balances out into a neutral compound. We can use the periodic table to help us identify the charges on these ions. When we add water, it dissolves into the ions with those charges. Sodium alginate is made up of sodium, which has a plus one charge, as well as alginate, which is made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and overall has a negative one charge. When we put it in water, it also dissolves into the sodium ion and the alginate strands. When we combine these two liquids, we see something cool happen. It locks up into a firmer and more structured gel. This is because the calcium ion bonds with the negative alginate strands. And because calcium has a plus two charge, it's able to bind two strands at once which is the key because it can create a bridge and cross-link the alginate together in an organized pattern. Here's the final chemical reaction. In fact, the sodium and the chlorine, which are essentially leftover ions, bond together to create table salt, and that's why we need to rinse the boba to make sure that they're not salty before serving them. So we can see that our sodium alginate and calcium chloride have reacted because we have this weird jelly-like structure. Now, is this really what we want? Well, yes, this is edible, but this is really just what we want on the outside of the popping boba, and we want the inside to still be liquid. To get perfect spheres, we use a dropper. And, well, <laughs> you can see they're not quite perfect, but we got a couple good ones. The other key piece is texture, and that all has to do with how long the spheres sit in the calcium chloride bath. We did a bunch of tests letting the spheres sit in the calcium chloride bath for different amounts of time. Ultimately, we found that about a minute was best, but it did depend on the size of the sphere. Here's one that sat for about three minutes. You can see that it took a lot of force to break the outer coating, and there wasn't much liquid on the inside. The store-bought boba didn't require much force and had a lot of liquid on the inside. Looking at this more methodically, here's three examples. One that sat for about 30 seconds, one that sat for one minute, and then one that sat for three minutes. You can see there's a big difference in the gel to liquid ratio. To learn more about texture, we talked to food scientist Tessa Porter, who designs candies at her company, Sprink. Thinking about just the right amount of force pushed down on a gummy candy and how that candy behaves is something she does on the regular. After talking to her, we realized that it was essential to have a really thin outer coating that quickly popped. All right, making our own popping boba. First off, a lot harder than we thought. We have gone through so many <laughs> failed experiments and trials, but I think we're getting somewhere and we've learned something from each one, in addition to having a ton of frustration. So the first thing is the pH of the liquid you're trying to spiricate 
really matters. And if the pH is too low or below 3.6, it won't work. Ah, I meant to check the acid. That clearly, that's what happens when it's really acidic. <laughs> The way we got around that is by adding sodium citrate, which is a buffer and essentially brings up the pH. More on that in another video, because honestly, that's a whole nother concept. So the other thing is that the liquids needed to sit once they've been blended with a sodium alginate overnight in the fridge. Not entirely sure why that's having such an impact, but it really did. So the first substance we're going to try out is green tea. All right, here we go. This one looks good to me. That's perfect. I'm super happy with that. So green tea, fairly successful. All right, so next up is the mango nectar. I'm gonna be honest, this is the one I have the most concern about. I'm skeptical that it's gonna work because we had such issues with fruit juices before. So we're gonna see, just cross our fingers. Oh, that looks pretty good. Oh my God. Maybe we figured it out. The only thing that I will say is I'm still skeptical just because sometimes what we found was that it looked like this beautiful sphere. And then as soon as we tried to remove it, it wasn't working. While they didn't dissolve, which was good, they still weren't great. They were more flat like discs rather than spheres. And there also wasn't as clear of a distinction between the gel and liquid parts. Last up, sriracha. I know it might sound crazy, but this was actually the tastiest one. I think it's because it's so concentrated in flavor. It's kind of dissolving. This one doesn't look too good. So it might need longer or it could still just be too acidic. I'm not sure. All right, so we're gonna try out the Sriracha one. Definitely, ooh. Yeah, I mean, it tastes like sriracha. While we made some progress, we still felt like we could do better. So we tried one last method called frozen spherification. So this basically is just frozen liquid. Each of the liquids frozen in a mold, so it keeps its shape a little bit more and we get a pretty large size. Because the spheres were frozen, we also had to warm up the calcium chloride bath. So not only was the bath spherificating the liquid, but also defrosting it. We found that these were our best results yet. While the sriracha one was still a little iffy, the rest, especially the mango, were really clear. And because of the bigger size, we could really see the juice interior and the gel coating on the outside. All right, final taste test. That is actually delicious. So ultimately, I think it was a lot of frustration, but worth it. That was delicious. I would make that again. I think we could work on the spheres a little bit more. The frozen molds are definitely the way to go. I don't know exactly how we'd get this slightly smaller shape. We'd need a different mold, but for right now, I'm happy with that. I should have realized I wouldn't be able to leave it just like that. The frozen spherification was clearly our best bet and we were making some headway. So we did one last trial and we got it. The perfect sphere, the perfect flavor, perfect texture. After countless trials, both on and off camera, this made everything worth it. So final thoughts, really enjoyed popping boba, would order it again, making it a whole nother story. I gained so much appreciation for this sphere, the perfect texture, perfect shape, much harder than I thought to recreate, but ultimately I'm pretty happy with this final product. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Bite Sized. Be sure to like and subscribe for more.